This is Trish from Wollongong and this rose is called Zephyrin Druin. It's a climbing rose bred in France in 1868. It's a repeat flowering bourbon rose. Very highly fragrant and today I'm going to give it a prune to encourage it to reflower re in six to seven weeks time. So what I need to do to get um, the most out of the flowers is to pull canes down because on every node you get a flower if you do and if if the cane's going straight up it ends up just flowering on the tip so we have to clear it out so then we can pull these canes over to the fence and tie them up so the first thing I do Pauline can you just look in here first thing I do is I look at the structure and I see which ones I'm going to move. So we go right in here. So um, this rose is only three years old, so it's going to be easy to prune. But you can see this one's going nowhere and it's coming outwards. And that one's really nothing, so I'm going to take those off. And I'm going to take this one off, so anything coming forward... I'm taking off anything that I can't really pull up against the fence. So I'm going to remove those at ground level. And I'll take this one off as well. It's going forward. To get a proper angle on this, I've got to use my saw. And you do that right up against the branch? No. No. You've got to leave a bit of a stump. Right. Because you don't want to cut into the stem of the plant. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So, take that down. Take that out, because I cleaned that one out. And see this one's coming forward? And I can't pull that either. I'm going to saw that as well. So, I'm doing it. Perpendicular to the way the branch is going. And I'm not cutting into the stem. I'm cutting about 6 mil away. And I'm not ruining that part of the plant. So that was quite a big piece. But that was all going forward that I couldn't pull. You see this one's going forward. I'll take that one off. Now this one's going forward, but look, I can pull it, so I can tie that to the fence. This one's going forward, but I remove that one like that, because that will probably flower, if I'm going to reuse that. So, and that one was coming forward. So that was pretty easy. I moved everything that was going forward. And see these ones here? These what fresh, fresh ones? Mm -hmm. I leave them on and I don't touch them. Okay. Because um, they'll toughen up. They'll probably break if I try and push them back. They'll break here. There. So, okay, so then what we do is we work out whether we've chosen all the branching. And yes, I think I have. I think I'm going to keep all this. So what I'm going to do now is prune each main cane and then prune the laterals of the main cane. So I'll start here down the bottom. So, right. so we've got to prune them all along because anything that's growing along will get a flower. An ultra node. And it doesn't matter which way it's facing. Yep. Just above a node. Yep, so come in here, Pauline. I'll show you where I'm cutting it. So I'll move, move that leaf so you can see. So is it close up there? Uh-huh. So you don't want to cut too close to the node like there. You just want to go a little bit further away, like six mil away, because you don't want to damage the bud mm -hmm. and the um, area around the node. So that's exactly how you've got to prune it. Uh-huh. Yep. Not, and it doesn't have to be a slant or anything. 
it's got to be a straight cut because you want to make the smallest wound you can. Any longer it'll die back, will it? Well, any longer it'll yeah. die back, but yeah. it, even worse than that, cutting into the bud is worse than that because at least die back will stop there. Uh -huh. Yeah, it'll stop there, it'll still shoot. So if it's a healthy, um, if it's a healthy um, rose, it'll recover from the little bit of die back. So yeah, you continue doing that all the way along each and then I'll start on the rest of the canes then I'll tie them to the fence like that and I'll come back to you okay so this is a, another cane so I'm going to do the same so one or two um, buds from there turn that one off and that one's a bit old. So what I'm doing here, see this here? I'm going to take it off so Pauline can get a close up. See, I don't want to cut into there because you're cutting into the, the stem of the plant. So you want to cut there. So you'll notice that that's, this has died back a little and that's actually naturally where it dies back to. Uh -huh. The plant has protected itself. But see how it's protected uh -huh. itself to that node? Uh, yep. It's left the little node on. See this one here is off colour, I'm going to take that off as well, but just above that scarring. So I've left the scarring on and I haven't cut into the main stem or the sap flow of the plant. This is a um, repeat flowering rose, so with um, rambling type um, roses you prune them once a year after flowering and with repeat you, they have a flush. Then you prune them like this, then they'll have another flush, and you prune them like this again. So you do about three or four times a year. It usually takes 42 days after pruning, and it will flower again. So that's why I'm doing this one. So Pauline, if you want to follow me around, because this, this rose, it, it grows through the fence. So I just thought, if it was being strangled by the fence, if these were um, getting strangled, I would take it off from the other side. But because it's not, I'm going to actually train that one that way. So there's no pruning there. I'm just going to tie it. And this one here is looking a bit old. So I'm going to take that off. But it's got one here that I can pull it down and train it. And so on. So I remove the old. See this one here? How it was rather old that colour. So I just took that off because, yeah, I'll leave all the um, newer stuff on. So um, I'll just take this one back here to get a new cane. There. And this is old-ish looking. So I'm going to take it back here because you can see I'm going to use this one to tie down. And this one here I'm just going to prune it there so it flowers there. So if you prune them like that, they're going to flower. And if you prune them like that, they're going to grow long and flower in each of the nodes. So yeah, I'll continue with that. So that side's um, nearly done. So I'll prune this one off from the other side. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm being very careful with this shoot, not to damage it because I want to keep that, that's shooting up nicely. It'll break off if I pull it down. So see how I've got these skinny ones? I'm going to take them off there. So there's one there and one there. And any other skinny ones like that, I'm going to take right back to that scarring where I showed you before. So this is the finished product here. So what I did was tied the the canes down, the horizontal canes. There's some soft growth vertical canes and I didn't pull those down and I didn't prune them because they were way too fleshy so they'll be dealt with next time. But what they'll do now is they'll actually get a flower on the top and then when, when they're older and we can pull them down, um, they will get a flower 
where each node is or we will cut them down here and they will flower down here with this cane. So I need to um, fertilise, make sure it's well watered and mulched and weeded. So to recap, I pruned out the canes that were going forward from the plant and then that, the ones that I couldn't pull to the side. The ones I could pull to the side I tied to the fence and it's okay if they overlap. The soft growth I left on till it matures and I'm able to pull it because if you pull it now um, they will it'll break the other thing you can do is cut it down to a couple of nodes but that's way too soft to cut not not hardened off enough and any canes that are going upright they'll get a flower on the top the terminal part of the the plant any any canes that are pulled to the side will get flowers all along that cane so, and any canes that were dead, I cut back and I left the little collar of the plant. I didn't cut into the stem of the plant. And I cut the little vertical shoots, two or three from the base. And these are the ones, they'll flower everywhere along here. They'll get new shoots in the cane. And anywhere that's that's um, horizontal, that'll flower. Anything that's vertical will get flowers on the top. So I'll show you the other side. So some of the young canes were able to be pulled across without snapping. And when they thicken up here through the fence, if they rub on the fence um, or get too thick, they would have to be um, cut off on the other side. It's just that there's nice thick, thick spaces, so we don't have to do that. We can let it flower on this side as well.